ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Shrimad Bhagavatam Canto 7 Chapter 11 Perfect Society Four Social Classes Text Number 18 to 20 We'll just begin with 18 and it goes to 20 also. Ritam Ritam Ritabhyam Riveta Ritena Pram Ritena Va. Satya Nrita Vyam Apiva Naswa Vritya Kadachana Rita Mrita Vyam Jiveta Ritena Pram Ritena Va Satya Nrita Tabyam apiva Naswa ritya kadachana स्वृत्या कदाचना Rita Amrita Byam By the means of livelihood known as Riti Rita and Amrita Jiveta one may live Ritena by the profession of Rit Mritya Rita Pra, pramritena va or by the profession of pramrita satya nrita byam api even by the professions of satya rita satya nrita a lot of ritas here va or na never shwa vritya by the profession of the dogs kadachana at any time translation and purport by his divine grace ac bhakti vidanta swami shri prabhupad In time of emergency one may accept any of the various types of professions known as rita amrita mrita pramrita and satyanrita so you just have to remember rita and you have got the the verse there but one should not at any time accept the profession of a dog profession of un chishila collecting grains from the field is called mrita rita so if someone decides after the class i'm just going to live by collecting grains from the field then you at least you know what you're doing it's called mrita you have a special and it's called in sanskrit it's called un chil un chashila collecting without begging is called amrita begging grains is called mrita tilling the ground is called pramrita and trade is called satyanrita engaging the service of low cl- class grade persons however is called shwa rita the perfection of the do- profession of the dogs 
specifically brahmanas and kshatriyas, should not engage in the low and abominable service of shudras. Brahmanas should be well acquainted with all Vedic knowledge, and kshatriyas should be well acquainted with the worship of the demigods. Purport is stated in the Bhagavad Gita 4.13, Chaturavanyamaya shvistam guna karma vibhaga shaha. The four divisions of human society were created by the Supreme Lord according to the three modes of material nature and the work ascribed to them. Formally, the principle of dividing human society into four sections. Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra was strictly followed. But because of the gradual neglect of the Varnashram principles, Varnashram, Varna Sankara population developed, and the entire ins- institution has now been lost. In this age of Kali, practically everyone is a Shudra, Kalo Shudra Sambhava. And finding anyone who is a Brahmana, Kshatriya, or Vaishya is very difficult. Although the Krishna consciousness movement is a movement of Brahmanas and Vaishnavas, it is trying to reestablish the divine Varnashram institution. Without this division of society, there cannot be peace and prosperity anywhere. I'll just keep on reading. Shama Dharma Tapas Chocham Shantosha Shanti Arjavam Kyana Dat Dayachutatmanatvam Satya Cha Brahma Lakshanam. The symptoms of a Brahman are control of the mind, control of the senses, austerity and penance, cleanliness, satisfaction. Forgiveness, simplicity, knowledge, mercy, truthfulness, and complete surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Purport. In the institution of Varna Ashram, Varna Ashram Dharma, the symptoms of a Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra, Brahmachari, Brihasta, Vanaprasta, and Sannyasi are all described. The ultimate aim is Achutatma Tvam. Achutatmatvam. To oh, think always of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna or Vishnu. To make advancement of Krishna consciousness, one has to become a Brahmana with the above mentioned symptoms. Namam Vishnu Vraya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutta, Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Dhanamane, Namaste Sarasatunde, Vagoravani Bacharane, Nirvishe Shashinivadi Paskya Dhyade Satarane. <clears throat> In this particular section, we'll find Varnashram Dharma is actually of quite importance. Generally, we don't take it very seriously because we're not very serious. <laughs> we don't take anything seriously. What to speak of a system that reg- regulates one's activities. People like to feel themselves to be free. Yeah, they're free to follow their senses and the mind, whichever they're being dictated by. But Panasham Dharma has a specific purpose of Yagya Vai Vishnu, Jagnatat Karmano Yadra, Lokayam Karma Bandhanai, Tarartpam Apikontiya Mukta Sangha Samachara, that work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu has to be performed, otherwise work binds one to this material world. Perform prescribed duties, O son of Kunti, for his satisfaction, and this way he'll always remain unattached and free from bondage. So, the background of all the Varnashram is to serve Krishna. Now, it just so happens that we have a body. If you haven't noticed, we're just reminding you that we have a material body. And this body has certain qualities. In other words, we have certain talents, we have certain inspirations, we have certain abilities, we have a certain age, we have different factors 
go into the particular body that we have. And having this particular body means that it's capable of some work, some activity, and it's not capable of other kinds of work and activity. Now, Krishna says, Shreya Swadamo Viguna Para Dharma Sunustita Te Dharma Nidaram Shreyak Para Dharma Bayavaha. That is far better to perform one's own prescribed duty than to perform somebody else's duty. Destruction of the cause of one's own duty is better because to follow someone else's duty is dangerous. In other words, we have a body which is meant for a certain type of activity. And if we perform that activity, then we can ill help us become Krishna conscious. But if we try to imitate someone else's duty, not only we won't become Krishna conscious, but we'll get the reactions, number one, for not doing our duty, and number two, for taking other someone else's duty. Interfering with anyone else's activity. Therefore, Varnashram is, would be essential if we could actually perform Varnashram. <coughs> but in the current society, there are no kings. There are no Brahmins. There are hardly any, probably said any real people have any interest in becoming a Vaisha. Sometimes people talk all about Van Ashram in the West, but they, they haven't even milked a cow in their life. <laughs> they have it all figured out, except for the practical part of it. Like who's going to rule, who's going to protect, who's going to milk the cow, who's going to plow the field. Oh, that's for, the, that's for other people. I, I, I'm, I'm the Brahmin. Can you do a sacrifice? No, no, that's all right. That's never the kind of Brahman. What can you do as a Brahman? I can eat on behalf of Krishna. <laughs> I have a big fire of sacrifice in my stomach. <laughs> so Varnashram will be eventually established, but it can only be established when you have people to fulfill the duties. And right now, Kalo Sudra Sambhava, everyone is a Shudra, born a Shudra, and being misdirected, being ill-trained, thinking that technology will save them. As a matter of fact, previously at least, before this pandemic, well, even now, the, all, when I went to college, all the, occupa- all the subjects that were being studied, like I studied English and psychology, now, if anyone studied probably English nowadays, you, unless you got a job teaching, you'd just starve. People couldn't care less. You could probably just go to another country and be an English teacher, and you don't have to go to school to study English, find out what a verb is, what an adjective is, what a pronoun is. You don't need that, any of this. You just teach people English nowadays. That's an English teacher. So all these occupations are useless now. Sociology psychology, anthropology. Now everything is technology. You ask anyone at a university what you're studying, IT, information technology. And once in a while you meet someone who's studying med, in med school or business. Business is probably said business means cheat. You go to school four years to learn how to cheat people. (laughs) Or you become a lawyer. Shark. People were on a boat, and they were shipwrecked. The boat had hit a rock, and it was shipwrecked. So therefore, but there was an island nearby where there was some resources they could actually get to eat. So everyone volunteered to try to get to the island. So one school teacher dove in, tried to swim to the island, but the sharks sharks came and ate him immediately. Then one engineer dove in, trying to get to the island, and the sharks ate him immediately. 
And this went on. And finally, one lawyer dove into the water. The sharks picked him up, took him to the island. He got everything they need, he needed. And the sharks picked him up and brought him back to the boat. So everyone was amazed. He said, what, what's your secret? He said, professional courtesy. <laughs> courtesy. <laughs> so these are the occupation nowadays. If the, all these occupations disappeared, still there wouldn't be any problem. People would still be able to farm and eat, which is the only essential occupation. Getting food, getting some food grains. If all the other occupations disappeared, there wouldn't be any problem. As long as that one occupation of collecting food grains and milk products was there, everything would go on quite nicely. A little building, of course, construction, but even these complicated buildings aren't really necessary. People could actually very easily construct a very small house and made out of natural ingredients with insulation, which would naturally insulate, and a little wood burning. There's plenty of trees in Slovenia. I don't think you're going to run out of trees in the near future. This is where everyone in Europe comes to to take birth as a tree. (laughs) And everything would, but so that's, then you could actually have an ashram when people are actually living a reasonable life, not running after technology. Performing here if they had an ashram would be made into a video game and people would just play, play the video game. The sacrifice by video. <laughs> you see, you know, virtual reality throwing swaha. Some virtual demigods come down. <laughs> We just people wouldn't engage in Van Ashram unless it was a video game. <laughs> You'd have virtual Kshatriyas killing virtual demons. So Van Ashram can be established when people are actually living a more simple life and therefore realize what it says here. The aim of Van Ashram is to focus the mind upon Krishna. We're so much distracted by so many things we have to do. We have to do everything except for think about Krishna. Therefore, most people, they're working very hard just to maintain their lives, just so they can go to the store and buy something to eat. So in order to do that, they have to get a car, they have to have a job, they have to have a credit card, you have to have so many different things just to be, get something to eat. It's that famous story of the Brahmin, saintly person, very renounced, he only had a pair of, of underwear and he put them aside to bathe in the Ganges and wash them, but one mouse came and took them away. We heard that story before. <laughs> So eventually, you know, after accumulating so many different things to protect his underwear, the mal- the the cat, the cow to feed the cat, the wife to milk the cow, the children to satisfy the wife, the house to take care of all of them, the two jobs he had in the car, he still couldn't protect his underwear. So we've made society so complicated to do something simple, namely to eat. And society has been made up so that people are forced to work like dogs just to get something to eat. In America, they outlawed in many cities growing trees that had fruit on it because people didn't have to work so hard. They could just go, especially in the southern part of America, they could just live off of fruit, which growed up, which was growing on the street. So they chopped all the trees down. 
so that people would work like a slave. They don't want people to live simply. They don't want people to be sane. They want them to work 26 hours a day, <laughs> work them to death so they can buy a video game. <laughs> and people actually think they're making progress. Therefore, they're always increasing. There's always an update <laughs> for everything. As soon as you buy something, you go online, you find out there was an update. <laughs> There's a newer model. Always costs more. And often it doesn't do anything more. Sometimes it does less. But people buy it anyhow because it's the newest model. As after you buy your software, every Every year there has to be an upgrade that you have to pay for. <laughs> and after a while, if you don't pay for the upgrade, it just doesn't work anymore. <laughs> and if you buy a computer, it's built in obsolescence so that you're forced to buy a computer, all, a car, a computer, your house. Everything is built in obsolescence. It's made to break down. They used to have light bulbs that didn't break down. But then people weren't buying light bulbs. <laughs> so they made them in such a way that they broke, broke, broke down. <laughs> the same thing with cars. Cars used to be made in such a way is that you didn't have to buy it. People would have cars for 30, 40 years. But that, that wasn't very profitable for the animal, automobile industry. So they made them. They're only made to last for a, a couple of few years before they just break down. And if, when they break down, if you don't buy a new car, you wind up spending for the, all the parts of the old car to repair it, and it costs you more than a new car, fixing the old one. <laughs> so society has become insane. They've lost the direction of life. And therefore, people are just living to watch a sports game. They can't kick the ball anymore. They, they watch other people kick the, the ball and vicariously think that they're kicking the ball. <laughs> they can't do anything. They can hardly turn the channel. They need a remote. They can't even get up. It's too far away. <laughs> and the only thing that's expanding in their life is their stomach. It's just getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> And they think that's progress. Because the bigger their stomach is, the more room is there is to fit something into it. So people have lost what the values of life is, what the purpose of life is. Of course, they've never had it in this lifetime. But Varnashram is meant to make things simple so that the necessity of life can be obtained. We don't find in, in Goloka Vrindavan or in Krishna's pastimes that there was a big attempt for technology. There's no need for technology. The whole idea of technology is supposedly to provide the necessities of life easier. But they've just made it more difficult. You don't need a computer to grow, put a seed into the ground. Matter of fact, by their computers, They've come up with these ideas like insecticides, pesticides, all these different sides that destroy the land, destroy the crops, destroy everything. And just, as Prabhupada said, just puts money in the, in the hands of a few people and everyone else suffers. So these things are unnecessary and that's what we're trying. We can establish Varnashram, but by the chanting of Hare Krishna, People can become sane and gradually give up some of these unwanted habits, unwanted ideas. And when people become sane enough, then they may become eligible to participate in the Ivanashram system. And therefore have a life where they can simplify life, where they could actually think of Krishna and concentrate their minds upon him. 
rather than all these complicated life where people have no time. Even our devotees sometimes, they have no time for Krishna consciousness. They're too busy working to maintain their family or to increase their situation or even just to maintain it is difficult enough due to the fact that the society purposely is making itself more and more complicated. Either they work 24 hours a day or they don't give you any work to do. And then you don't know what to do. You sit at home and do nothing. Go crazy. So this Vanashram will engage people according to their psychological, psychophysical natures, and then they'll find, actually find satisfaction. And they'll actually be able to hear about Krishna with an undisturbed mind, and therefore actually follow the principles, not only of Varnashram, but of pure devotional service eventually. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Um, according to our society, we don't have much. We have mostly temples or not so much farms or facilities that can provide for all the varnas. And um, what about like temples are mostly for the Brahmana type of uh, people. Um, so how can uh, other people engage in their varnas, so-called varnas, um, according to the... Well, in Kali Yuga, for now, we have to use our propensities to spread the Sankirtan movement. If we have the tendency to preach, to study and read, and to tell others our understanding, then we should preach, preach about Krishna. The Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We have a tendency to organize and we should organize the Sankirtan movement. If we have a tendency to get resources, we should utilize them for the Sankirtan movement, either in our personal home, engage in Krishna's service, or to give some to spread the movement. And if one is, has other abilities, one is a musician or an artist, or utilize those, move, those abilities in the cultural revolution convince people that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, whatever our talents are, can be utilized in the Sankirtan movement. Then, eventually, we might get some people who have a tendency, some devotees have a tendency that they, they like to farm, they like to take care of cows, and then we can actually establish an actual society, a more complete system society. Brahmins are good. Brahmins and Vaishnavas are good, but we need more than that. Just like you need more than just a head. You need a stomach, you need arms, you need legs too. But most of us are not about to become legs. But even if we are legs, we should utilize those in, in assisting the spreading of the Sankirtan movement somehow or another. Then we'll get a more complete society eventually. <clears throat> because even Van Ashram, even the idea of foreign communities, is not just to grow things. People are already growing things. If you grow cauliflower, you get a farm, grow cauliflower. Of course, you know, by the time you pay for the farm and everything else, it costs you five dollars a cauliflower. But you can just go to the store and buy it for fifty cents. <laughs> so it's impractical just for the sake of growing cauliflowers. You don't have to establish an ashram. <laughs> but there's a quality to the consciousness and what you grow, et cetera, et cetera. And therefore, whatever you're doing becomes valuable and people are engaged, et cetera, et cetera. And eventually, when you have a more complete system, even growing cauliflowers will be more economical because you, you don't need you can grow your own cauliflowers. You don't have to buy the seeds or anything. And they're actually healthy. They're actually nutritious. They just don't look like a cauliflower. They'll actually be a cauliflower. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, anything else? Okay, thank you very much. Kandara Shumad Bhagavatam Kijai. Shila Prabhupada Kijai. Gore Pimananda.